because we got to do this right if we're going to do it. My wife left the conference a few days ago, and um, at the conference, she took, she took some friends with her there, and everywhere she turned, people was grabbing her for a picture. It was like, oh my God, that's Dr. Jackie, it's Dr. Jackie. And the friends with her was like, oh my God, like you a real life celebrity out here in these streets. <laughs> just like, no, nah, I'm just Jackie. Uh, um, I share that because I don't want us to get so familiar with the gifts that God give us. So oftentimes when you're around people all the time, it's like, oh, that's just whoever. And then it's a whole world that appreciates them outside of this room. And so I want, that's why I ask you to stand, because I want us to honor and give God praise for the vessel that will be bringing the word to get today. The world's greatest, my jewel, my pride, my joy. Clap your hands to their herd and make some noise for Pastor Dr. Jackie Green. Y'all don't stop clapping. Let's give Jesus, let's give our great Savior, our great Redeemer, our strong tower, our way maker, our miracle worker. Our pro- no, no, don't stop, don't stop. Let's press in. Oh, I'm feeling strong today. Oh, my baby is here with me. And my father is before me. Oh, let's give him glory. Let's give him glory. Don't stop right there. Don't stop right there. We've been talking about pursuing him. Let's press in today. He deserves all of our worship. He deserves all of our praise. Does anybody know that he's worth everything? No, no. Does anybody know he's worth everything? He's not just worth some things. He's worth everything. Oh, Father, you are awesome. Anybody with me, Daddy? You are awesome. You are mighty. You are strong. You are my very best friend. And I thank you for what you've already done. How often do we forget to just have gratitude for what he's already done? I think we need to look back at songs today to rekindle this faith that we had of old. I want to remind you that we can hold hold fast to our declaration of faith. I'll tell you why. Not because you're faithful. Not because you'll get it all right. But because he's faithful. Can I hear anybody in this room that knows that we serve a God that is truly faithful? Faithful to deliver, faithful to heal, faithful to set free, faithful to transform, faithful to make ways. Oh, I tell you, we serve the right God today. We serve the right God today. I am so excited to be in this house. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? God is so good. He's so mighty, so wonderful. I I so love that God gave PT that song about he's able, that we've been in a time where the enemy's been coming for our trust. He's been coming in for our desire, our ability, our fight to continue to believe that God can do just what he said that he would do. Does anybody got a word out there? Does anybody got a word out there? Let me see you swirl. Does anybody got a word out there that you're believing God for? That daddy, I'm still looking to you. I'm still pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God. I know that what you said, you will perform, that you're watching over this word that you said about me. And I trust that you'll perform it. I know it may not look like it right now, Forward City, but I am here on assignment. I am here on assignment to let you know that if you keep trusting him, if you keep trusting him, if you keep trusting him, he will do just what he said. You can go ahead and take your seats, but I'm telling you, we're going to stir up some faith today. Our topic for today is the cost of trust. Anybody just need to be increased in faith today? Oh man, oh man, I'm super excited about God. Super excited about God. So we're closing the Unhero series. Anybody enjoyed it so far? Like y'all make some real noise. We be digging in. We be really pressing in to get rhema word from God to help inspire you to do just what God said. The whole reason the message came to be or series came to be was we were tired of standing as as, as your leaders watching you all accept the demise and the frustration of not actually being able to pursue the thing that God has said about you. You are presenting every excuse after one excuse after another excuse after another excuse, not believing that you could do what God said. But I just want to say into this atmosphere that if you trust him, he will perform the work that he said. 
Did you hear me? If you keep on trusting, you got to persist in faith sometimes. If you keep on trusting, he'll do just what he said. And so in this series, we've been walking through the book of Judges where we've been looking at several ordinary people, Deborah and Ahud. Anybody remember the trees where they preached to us last Sunday about not swaying? We've been looking at ordinary people that God did extraordinary things through just because they kept trusting in God, because they allowed him to use their weakness and make them strong. Anybody got some weaknesses in here that you need God to show through? No, no. Does anybody know that if he didn't do it, you wouldn't be where you are today? I'm telling you, I know I'm not the only one in the building that needs to be increased in faith. And that's what we're pressing into. The reason why we're pressing in this series so hard is our desire is that every excuse we've been presenting to God, that they would be extinguished, they would be eradicated, that they would be challenged and destroyed. I pray that every argument that has come and exalted itself against the knowledge of God, of that word that God has said about you, that you would accept the fact that it is truly a lie and that the word of God would absolutely bring it down for you today. Did you know? Did you know that there is a word that is attached to your very existence right now? That when God spoke you, he spoke you and there's a word that's hovering, as I said before. There is a word that shall come to pass because angels move with charts concerning that word that's on assignment with you. God has sent us on assignment to do a thing. You know how the word talks about thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jordan, I'm telling you, baby, that word, that kingdom will come through you. We are all unheroes, not just the people in the book of Judges. We are all unheroes, and we have to recognize, we have to resolve to recognize that if God could do it through those people, those ordinary men and women and judges, then surely, somebody get a surely in your spirit, then surely he'll do it through me too. Amen. So we're just going to push a little further. We're going to start in the book of, of Judges in the 11th chapter. Today, we'll be looking at a young man named Jephthah. And I want you to stand with me for the reading of the word. We're just going to go in and just read a little bit. Anybody love the word? Man, I'm telling you, that word will keep you. It will sustain you. It will literally be the voice of God in times where you're lost. And so I just challenge any of you, um, as my husband would like to say, don't just read the Bible. Read the Bible. It will build you up. It will edify you and teach you. And so we're just going to jump, jump into Judges 11, 1 through 11. It says, now Jephthah of Gilead was a great warrior. He was a son of Gilead, but his mother was a prostitute. Gilead's wife also had several sons, and when, and when these half-brothers grew up, they chased Jephthah off the land. You will not get any of our father's inheritance, they said, for you are the son of a prostitute. One translation said, you're the son of another woman. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tobay. Soon he had a band of worthless rebels following him. Let me tell you something, that word that God has said about you, it'll still keep showing up irrespective of what life brings your way. Did you hear me? That word will keep kicking and showing up. Verse 4, at about this time, the Ammonites began this war, their war against Israel. When the Ammonites attacked, the elders of Gilead sent for Jephthah in the land of Tobay. The elders said, come and be our commander. Help us fight the Ammonites. Verse 7, but Jephthah said to them, aren't you the ones that hated on me and drove me from my father's house? Y'all, they got to remember. They got to remember. Why do you come to me now when you're in trouble? Verse 8, because we need you, the elders replied. If you lead us in battle against the Ammonites, we will make you ruler over all the people of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders, let me get this straight. If I come with you, and if the Lord gives me victory over the Ammonites, will you really make me ruler over all the people? The Lord is our witness, the elders replied. We promise to do whatever you say. Verse 11. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him their ruler and commander of the army. At Mitzvah, in the presence of the Lord, Jephthah repeated what he had said to the elders. You can go ahead and take your seats, but I want you taking your seats just thinking about the fact that what God said about you, it shall surely come to pass. If you count the cost of trusting in him, and surely I tell you, it will be a cost. That yes that we give to daddy, it's a high call and a high privilege. 
but it'll truly be worth it if you continue to trust in him. Amen. Amen. So we look at verse 1 through 3 initially. This gives us the background of who Jephthah is. And when we start looking at verse 1, it tells us that Jephthah is a great warrior. But he's a man that's been born to a prostitute. So he's been birthed from, from brokenness. Anybody know about brokenness? Man, I tell you, this is where we start. We begin to see God unfold this picture of who Jephthah is. And so it goes on in verse 2 to talk about that although he had several half-brothers, these brothers only saw him as the son of another woman. They only saw him as the son of a prostitute. They counted him worthless, the Bible talks about when they say that you won't receive anything from our father's inheritance. And better yet, we, we label you as an outcast. Get out of here. Anybody know what it's like to be rejected? To be put out, to be shoved, shoved aside? This is the picture that we're being painted in verse 2. And then it goes on in verse 3. It says that Jephthah takes refuge in the land of Tobay. And it's here where the announcement of him being a great warrior is actually coming into fruition. Do you know that God doesn't just send a word, but he will actually prepare you, that he will actually watch over this word to perform it. And so you see Jephthah actually show up in this land that's not the land he actually is supposed to be in. But even in this land... Listen, even in this land, I love what the end of verse 3 says. It says, soon he had a band of worthless rebels, rebels following him. And so you see, a lot of times life will happen and people might do things. Maybe you went through a divorce. Maybe um, the job fired you and you had to relocate and go back home. What I want you to recognize, because you might be in a season where you're a little confused and you don't understand, like, Daddy, I know you said I was supposed to be this, but my circumstances and what I'm looking at don't actually look like what you said. Do I got any witnesses in the room? Yeah, I came to let you know. I came to give you a clue to where you are right now irrespective of what happens with life that word that God has spoke that's hovering it will show up wherever you show up do you understand that it didn't matter I'll give you example David if David was in the pasture with sheep, the call of shepherding was already deposited on the inside of him and even in that low place shepherding would keep rising up I want to challenge you just like David or Joseph who was a dream interpreter. He wasn't just a dream interpreter for the people of the palace, but also for the people in prison. I was telling my husband as we rode here this morning, baby, no matter where God placed me, whether it was in the small hometown of Sandersville, Georgia, no matter if it was in the dormitory of Georgia Southern or even here at Forward City Church on now a platform, that thing of me empowering women would just keep rising up and showing up and showing itself forth. And so I want you to recognize no matter where you find yourself, never let your call die. Let, a, let God continue to, to perfect that thing wherever you find yourself. Don't let what you, your surroundings or life happiness kind of block or uh, dissuade you from being able to push forth in the things of God. What God has said about you, if you keep trusting, it will end up back in the right place. But wherever you are, let it show forth. Amen. Amen. Let it show forth. That thing will keep ringing out. It'll keep ringing out. I could see God looking over the balcony of heaven like, oh yeah, they think they done got my boy Jephthah. But I'm telling you, he's a great warrior. You might put him in Tobay, that land that's not his, but that commander. You see, it says that he, uh, in just a little while, a group of men had start following him. It was because he was birthed a deliverer. He was birthed a judge. He was birthed a commander. And there was nothing heaven or hell or nobody could do to stop it. I'm just telling you, that word that's on the inside of you, if you keep trusting in it, if you keep leaning in to hear what God is saying about you, it will be enough to continue to propel what God has placed on the inside of you to come forth. Oh man, I'm so grateful. I don't know about you, that the arms of life's happenings are not strong enough to oppose the word that God has said about me. I'll tell you again, I'm grateful that the arms of life's happiness aren't strong enough to oppose what daddy has already said about me. Oh, rejection might give you its best shot, but God's word will always reign supreme. Oh, depression might give you its best shot. Fear, loss might give its best shot. But I'm telling you, if you keep trusting in Jesus, if you keep trusting in the surely it will come to pass, I'm telling you, you're going to see it work for you. Oh, I'm building your faith today. I want you to trust him like you've never trusted him before. 
And so as we continue to go forward, I know by now you might feel like me where you're looking at the fact that Jephthah has gone through a lot in his beginnings. He's been born to a prostitute. He literally has this disadvantage of origin. He's been called or known as a bastard child, an exile, all at the same time. I'm so grateful that it's not just Jephthah's story, but it's many of ours, how God will look at a broken thing and make it beautiful. Is that anybody's testimony in here? That, Lord, there is no way I would be where I am had it not been for your grace. There is no way I would be doing what I'm doing had it not been for your love that kept reaching for me. Oh, God, I'm grateful that you take broken things and still make them beautiful. Oh, God. He showed up for Jephthah just like he showed up for many of us. And so we start by looking at one through three in Judges. But I'm telling you, there's a there's a um, chapter in Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Anybody know about Hebrews 11? This is the faith, the faith hall of fame where Jephthah name also shows up. Let me read the scripture to you. It is Hebrews 11, 32 and 33. And it says, and what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, and David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administrated justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouth of lions. And the book just goes on and on and on and on, talking about how if you put your trust in God, if you persist in faith, how you can become a hero in faith as well. I'm telling you, he'll take a broken thing and make it beautiful. That Don't despise your humble beginnings. It doesn't matter where you started. There is a God that will look down on you, that will breathe the breath of life in you, that will keep speaking to you, baby, and say, everything I said about you shall come to pass. Oh, there's a surely right there for you that will come to pass if you don't give up on it. Oh, there's a word hovering. I'm telling you, there is a word hovering that you got to keep your faith in. You got to keep your faith in. You got to keep your faith in it. God redeemed Jephthah's brokenness. He didn't care about his past, his present, or his future. That word was going to surely come to pass. Anybody grateful? I told the last service, and I'm going to tell you as well, you got to tell the people that are walking with you or judging you or side-eyeing you, don't just read my first chapter. Read my whole story if you want appreciation for who I really am. You can't just read the first chapter because if we had just stopped in Judges looking at the fact in verse 1 through 3 that he was the, he was the son or the product of a prostitute, we would have missed the fact that he was also an unhero that was named with the grace of the Old Testament in Hebrews. I'm telling you, you got to tell somebody beside you. Don't just read my first chapter. You got to read my whole story. Oh, God has been a God of trust. He's been a God of faithfulness. He's been a God of faithfulness. We see it over and over again. If we look back at Judges and we keep on going how God brought Jephthah through trials and betrayal and he trained him in isolation and all of these things were used to work for him. All of these things were used to work for him. I want to submit that there may be something that you're presently looking at, presently frustrated about, that's being used to shape you into the very word that God has said about you. Oh, no, no, let me talk about it. You know that molestation that you thought was going to break you? I want to submit that if you keep trusting you, trusting him, it'll shape you. That job that you thought that you lost it was going to deplete you. If you keep trusting him, there is somehow with his word. He said he'll work it all together for your good. Oh, I promise you, it'll shape you into being that word that he said. If you keep trusting in him, we got to keep trusting him. We got to keep trusting him. The naysayers, they thought they were going to break us by the things that they said. But Melly, I'm telling you, baby, it is still shaping you into the woman God has said. We have been shaped by God. I know for myself, I looked at my daddy absence as an excuse to shrink back and have, you know, just issues with my identity. And then God made it very clear to me, baby, that's just something, a tool that I'm going to use to sculpt you into the woman that I want you to be. Oh, you're going to be able to free other people that are going through those same issues where daddy was gone and I didn't know my identity. But there is a God that we can call Abba Father. Did you hear me? There is a God that will be the answer to our lack. And I want you to recognize there is no excuse in that. It'll just be used to shape. It'll be used to sculpt. Keep trusting in him. 
I hated the fact that I had issues with my own natural beauty. Just couldn't get the weeds thing out my system. Had a hard time for a long time. But I am grateful today that as a result, I've seen many girls be able to be freed by my freedom because I stopped hiding in the fact that it was something that was used to shape me. Oh, God will use what you will offer up to him. If you uncover it, I promise he'll use it. You got to trust him. Anybody want to go further and trust today? Does anybody want to go further and trust today? Oh, man, God is good. Jephthah, just like Jackie, had a lot of legitimate reasons to have every excuse not to become an unhero. But rather than using it as an excuse, he used it because he kept trusting God to shape him. That's what I want to submit to you today. That all these things that you've been looking at, you've been frustrated with. I want you to take a moment right now to just get it on your mind. Whatever the biggest thing is that the enemy keeps taunting you with, he keeps saying that that's the reason you're not good enough, that that's the reason you're not going to be able to do it. I want you to get that thing on your mind, and then I want you to scream this at me. It'll only be used. Say it with me. It'll only be used to shape me. Will you trust him? Will you trust him to shape you? Will you trust him to shape you? If you're going to trust him, let me hear you make a noise, make some noise. Oh, I'm going to trust him to shape me. Hallelujah. Y'all, I am sweating up here like a Hebrew slave. Listen, listen. Hi, okay? So we've now settled this idea that the things that we've been crying about, frustrated about, we've been lost in our identity about, they're only being used by God. Because see, you know, God has to allow stuff that comes in your life. He's only going to use this stuff to shape us into the very word that he said. And so we'll move from um, Jephthah's background to look at the calling that comes in verse 4 through 11. This is what he says in verse 4 and 5. As a result of the Ammonites waging war on Israel, the elders of Gilead go to Jephthah to get him from the land of Tobay and bring him back to the land that he was originally intended for. Can I just submit one other thing to you? God will do whatever it takes to see his word come to pass in your life. Did you hear me? He will do whatever it takes to see his word come to pass in your life. Famine or war or whatever it takes to get you back to the original intent for who he created you for. He'll do whatever it takes to get you back there. That's why I'm telling you over and over again. Yeah, you might have a setback. You might have a delay. But be fully persuaded that you can trust that God will do whatever it takes. Here we see Jephthah reestablished back into commandership of Israel as a result of war. He doesn't care what it takes, but he'll do what's necessary to get you back to your rightful place. Can we get an amen for that? That he'll do whatever it takes. We look at verse 6 and 7, and this is Jephthah's response to them asking him, um, look, y'all, uh, so Jephthah, we got an issue. The Ammonites, they come in, they attacking us, and we need you to come and command us. Jephthah says back to them, look. Weren't y'all the same people that was like hating on a brother? Like, do y did y'all forget that y'all like totally just threw me aside and discarded of me? Anybody ever been there? You know how them people will come back and they act like they never hurt you or they never owed you money or they never talk bad about you. But now that they in need, their expectation of you is to show up and be present for them. Oh, anybody need a little forgiveness in their heart this morning? Huh? Does anybody in the room need a little forgiveness in your heart this morning? I'm telling you one thing that I learned from Jephthah that I'm grateful for. He took a page out of our great Savior's book. Jesus, the Almighty God. He saw time after time how Israel was just using him where in a time of war, they were crying out. They were on their knees. Jesus, we need you to save us. But in the times of peace, they were serving the foreign gods and the other idols. Here, they discarded of Jephthah when his daddy died and acted like just because he was a son of another mother, which, by the way, had nothing to do with him. Had nothing to do with him that now they were in need. They were going to call on him. What I want to ask the question is, how many of you are allowing your pain to speak louder than your call? Huh? How many of you have just decided, like, they hurt me too bad, Vanya. Vanya, they hurt me too bad. There's no way I'm giving them my heart back again. Love anyway, what is that? Or, I got too used up the last time. I know God has called me to be benevolent, but I can't keep giving them myself and being used up. Pain, speaking louder than the call. Jesus, he said, despite the pain, 
what happens when they start calling my name is that call that's on the inside of me to be a way maker and a miracle worker or start rising up and irrespective of what they did I still have to answer the call I'm challenging somebody in the room today to let your call speak louder than your pain let your call speak louder than your pain. I know it hurt. I sympathize with you. And let me tell you, I'm not speaking down to you. I'm speaking to myself too because I'm telling y'all, people funny. Huh? Huh? Man, they'll be with you one day and the next day. Jesus, PT and I, we could write a sermon about people just, just that. We could just pause there for the rest of the day. But I just want you to know that the call that's on your life is so much greater than what people could ever do. You got you to gotta let your call speak louder than your pain. I'm telling you, it'll be worth it in the end. Verse 8 through 11, they go on to talk about after, you know, Jeff to remind them, like, you know, y'all really kind of did me dirty. He's like, but look, we really need you. And then they make him a promise. They're like, look. If you lead us in a time of war, then we'll also serve you in a time of peace. Like, we promise that we'll let you be ruler over us. This is what they go on to say. And I just want you to recognize that just like I talked about earlier, you know how in the times where everything going good and we, we you know we out here and we getting it and we feeling good and we on the mountaintop we feeling like oh yeah you know I got this you know prayer kind of slow down we don't go back to our prayer closet as much we don't call on those spiritual mentors like we used to this is the same thing that we're seeing here where they basically turned their back on Jephthah they turned their back on God served other foreign gods and I just sense God asking for a recommitment of full trust not just in war but let him be your God of peace too so y'all gonna play with me you know the last time you prayed was that time when that guy just totally destroyed your heart but what about the time where you're in your relationship and your boo he just speaking all right and you forget about daddy those marital like those relationships the money all of that status all of that stuff becomes our gods when everything is good but he's saying I'm telling you I'll take you way further if you trust me even on the mountaintop if you seek me first in all my righteousness then everything that you need will be added to you and the stuff that you're working harder for because you're not actually consulting me I'm telling you with my trust with your trust in me in the times of peace I'll do so much more let him be your God of war and God of peace let him be your God of war and God of peace. We don't need to get to the place where we busted, disgusted because we've decided I'm going to do it my own way. I'm going to go do my own thing. And then, boom, we right back to our knees because we are left in need of a savior. I'm telling you, it's so much better to trust him from the beginning. Anybody going to trust him? Can we just submit to the fact that, Daddy, I'm recommitting not just to the good, not just to the bad times, but even in the good. I want to smile with you. I want to dance with you. I want to laugh with you. I don't always want to come snotty nose, crying, busted and disgusted. Like, I want you all the time. I need thee. I need thee. Oh, how I need thee. Every hour, every second of every minute. Oh, I need thee. Yeah, yeah. That's the type of service. That's the type of a devotion that God is looking for. Oh man. So we move on to verse 12 through 28. And this is where we've gone from the place of looking at his background. The call has come. And now it's time for war. It's time for war. And we see here that although Jephthah is a man of, he's a great warrior, he's also a man of God and that he truly likes peace. In this moment, Jephthah could have just been like, you know, he's been attacking my land. I'm just going to war. Like, I know I slay giants. Like, I do this. Like, I got God on my side. But Jephthah does something interesting that I really like. He took the time to basically go on behalf of his people to talk to the Ammonite king. And he's like, yo, why are you even attacking my land? Like, what did we do to you? Do anybody in the room just need a little more patience to try to make it peaceable before you go to war? Y'all, you know, sometimes we be ready. We be ready rather than trying to make it an amicable just resolution. And so this is what we see Jephthah do. He goes and he's like, why are you attacking us? And the Ammonite king, he's a little bogus. He basically says that when y'all came out of Egypt, y'all were trying, y'all took my land. Y'all did all this stuff. And Jephthah, he literally gets him told. Jephthah says to him, look, we received this land from the Amorites and if you wanted your land you should have went and fought the Amorites because we didn't take this land from you we took the land from the Amorites justly and if it was given to me by my God surely I'm going to possess it 
anybody been given something by God that you're not truly possessing, I'm challenging you that God will sometimes breathe and hang you something that he's desiring for you to possess, not just give up so easily. And this is a challenge for Jephthah in this moment. Yeah, he wants peace, but, you know, don't just come any kind of way. Like, don't pop off and it don't be right. Like, you come for me, my, my God's going to show up. Y'all better know the God that you serve, that there is more for you than against you. It might look bad, but I'm telling you, there is a God that will show up, that the God of angels' army will show up and fight on your behalf. And this is what we're seeing. And so basically, long story short, the Ammonite king, he doesn't listen. He's just like, dude, I'm not studying you. So they go to war. They let God George um, judge through blood. And, of course, you know what happens. You know, the Ammonites, they lose, of course. And so it's, it's interesting how at the beginning of the, of the time where they're going to push into war, he's trying to make the treaty, the Ammonite king, he don't listen. And so they're right at the start of this thing where they're getting ready to go to war. And I want to read verse 29 through 31 for you just to see this one thing that Jephthah does. I know Jephthah was a hero in the a Faith Hall of Fame. I know God took broken things and made them beautiful, all of this good stuff. But it's just one thing I was really frustrated in this text with, with Jephthah. Let's read verse 29. It says, at the time the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, y'all, the spirit had already come. He was already there. And he went throughout the land of Gilead and Manasseh, including Mitzvah and Gilead. And from there, he led an army against the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord. Tell somebody beside you why he had to make the vow. You got to use broken English. Why he had to make the vow. Why he had to make the vow. That's all I got. He said, if you give me victory over the Ammonites, I will give you the Lord whatever comes out of my house to meet me when I return in triumph. I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. I just want to take a moment because this is a real meat of this whole message. Why? when we recognize that God is already with us, he's already confirmed it by 12 prophets. You done fasted 40 days and 40 nights. You already heard and you know for sure that he said that he's gonna be with you, that you feel that you have to try to do something in your own strength still. Why do we feel like we have to manipulate the situation? Oh, I'm really talking to my women because you know, oh, we'll get to manipulating the thing. Oh, I'm gonna make this thing work the way I want it to work. In, in, this, in this text, what we see is Jephthah, even a man of God, even a guy that has seen God time and time again shape him, take broken things and make it beautiful. He gets to the time of war and he doubts God. He tries to use this vow and say a good thing like, Daddy, whatever come out of my house, I'll give it to you and not just give it to you anyway. I'll give it as a burnt offering just to make sure that God will be for him. Can I just tell you that God is surely for you already. You don't have to do anything to earn the fact that he's going to be for you. You don't have to manipulate the situation. PT talked about recently that he's not the God of our strength. He's the God of our weaknesses. And he doesn't need your help. Did you hear me? He does not need your help to fulfill the word that he said about you. So here we see Jephthah make one of the most costly decisions of his life. He wins the war. He goes back to his hometown. And what comes walking out of his front door? His little girl. His only child. And as a result of that, he has to offer her up as a burnt sacrifice. A foolish decision. God didn't ask you to do that. He didn't ask you to put your hand in it. He didn't ask for you to mess up what he was already preparing. He didn't ask for your help. How much will we have to sacrifice as a result of us not just trusting him and taking him at his word? Oh, I'm challenging you to demolish every excuse, to get rid of your decision, to try to step in there and give, oh, you know, I'm going to help you out, God. I don't need your help. I'm God all by myself. I make mountains bow low. I do this. And that's what I want you to remember. God, he does this. Why are we questioning him? He will surely show himself strong. Yes, we may see a lot of things that don't add up to what he said. But would you trust him too much to give up? 
Would you persist in faith? Would you keep on after you've done all the stand, stand again? Would you keep your face set like a flint? The cross before you and the world behind you saying, Daddy, I've decided to follow you. No turning back. No turning back. This is a call for today that you would take you out of it, that you would fully trust him again and allow him to show himself strong. Now, I want to tell you something. I'm not telling you something I heard about. Did you hear me? I am not just giving you some beautiful um, story that God didn't absolutely require me to live. What gives you permission? What gives you authority to walk in the right to free people through a word? Is the fact that you live it. This all sounds cute and good, right? So, you know, we have to trust Jesus and he's surely gonna come through. And that is a true statement. But the cost of trust is real. I've been in a moment, a divine moment, where the enemy, not just me, but my husband as well, the enemy has really made waged war. Uh, waged an attack on our voice where he wants to silence us, he wants to shut us down, he wants us to second guess what God has already said. That word that's hovering, he's coming against that word. And I promise you that we are deciding that we would demolish every argument, that we would, we would tear down every word that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. I've been fixated on trusting him, irrespective of what I see. Yeah, I might cry, but I'm going to go crying. I might not get it all right, but I'm going to say it anyway. My marriage might not be perfect, but I won't give up. We got to get a righteous indignation on the inside of us. We got to wage war back on the enemy. So this Friday, just what, two days ago, I go to this conference in Atlanta. Pinky Promise Conference, shout out to Heather, doing an amazing job. I go and I know it's going to be a great sacrifice, but I'm fixated on the fact that I'm going to give a devil a black eye because he's been coming for me. I'm going to be refilled. I'm going to be recharged. This defeated devil ain't going to keep telling me lies and keeping me silent when I have a God that has told me to cry aloud and spare not. So we're there. Get some time with Heather. She's just affirming all these amazing things that God has said. There's a book in you and don't delay. Like, why do we think we're so haughty that we have tomorrow? Do what God has called you to do today. Oh, she all up in my business. Oh, she coming for me. And I'm just loving it because I needed that kick in the butt. And I pray that that's what I'm doing for you today. She's just pouring into me and I'm just like, yes, can it even get any better? Well, that night session came and Sarah, um, Rob, Sarah Jakes Roberts, she's there and... I'm telling you, she poured and she poured and she poured. She was talking about how bruised heels still crush serpent's head. Like you might walk with a limp, but I, you better go walking. That you might feel fear, but you better do it anyway. Yeah, so I'm there. I'm being super empowered. I'm like, oh, devil, you better come with something better than this. I'm telling you, no, no sooner than I walk out of that place. I walk into the parking lot. Got several of my ladies with me that I pour into, spiritual daughters, best friends with me. We get to the parking lot where I park. Black glass everywhere. Car, nowhere to be found. Somebody has taken my truck, our luggage, electronics, all kind of stuff. She just preached the word, don't let the devil snatch your joy. Don't let the devil snatch your peace. Don't let the devil snatch all these things from you. And I'm like, God, he, he really gonna come for me already? And I'm telling you in that moment, I just decided I was gonna follow Jesus no matter what. That he wasn't gonna take from me what he didn't pay for because my daddy got on a cross for me. He got on a cross that I might be free, that I might have life and have it more abundantly. And even in the midst of that parking lot, I was still taking pictures with girls who wanted pictures. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sent a girl named Patience as, as we were standing out there. And I told her, oh, won't he send a word? See, I'm going to praise him in the midst of it. See, I need some people to get up and praise him in the midst of it. Yeah, you had seen the end of that thing. No, it had turned around. They haven't even found my trunk. But I'm still standing here today declaring that Jesus is my Savior. He's my Lord. He's my Redeemer. He's my strength. And I trust him too much to give up. Y'all, I get back home and me and PT, we're talking and he said this one thing and it took me out. I said, that was the thing I needed. <laughs> We've been in six for two and I'm telling y'all, y'all need to be at six for two because God will prepare you for stuff that you don't even know you're being prepared for. God gave him this prophetic song and it says, the enemy may take some things, but he can't take my worship. Woo! He might take some stuff. He might take some stuff. Some people might leave. The job might go. But daddy, I promise you, I'll never stop serving you. I'll never stop opening my mouth. I'll never stop trusting you. I'll never give up on my marriage. I'll never give up on this joy that you set before me. And I just want you all to know that God wants you to know that if you keep trusting him, surely that word will come to pass. Can we just lift up that song? The enemy may take some things, but he can't take my worship. Y'all let it swirl. Send to heaven, send hell a notice. Oh, I'm going to trust him again. Oh, I'm going to trust him again. Oh, I'm going to trust him again. Oh, the enemy may take something, but he can't take my worship. He can't take my worship. Oh, the enemy may take but it can't take my word. Can't take my word. Come on, declare it. Oh, the enemy may take But it can't take my word. Come on, declare it. The enemy may take But it can't take my word. Come on, declare it. I need to hear the voices. Whoa! But it can't. Say. But it can't take my worship. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Pastor Travis. I'm Pastor Jackie. We are with Forest City Church, and we wanted to come and thank you for watching this week's message. We love you so much. We hope that you were blessed by something that you saw or heard. Yeah, I'm praying that you were inspired to live and to move forward. Hey, whenever you're in the Columbia, South Carolina area, make sure you come visit us, 1955 Grand Road. We can't wait to worship with you. Got nothing but love for you. Remember, your past is gone. Your future is waiting. Move forward. Move forward.